Hey you crazy kids out there, Zach Evnish here from undergroundstrength.tv and I want to bring you part two of the underground strength program design methods. We've had a lot of inquiries from uh, strength and conditioning coaches. We've had inquiries from athletic coaches. We've also had inquiries from CrossFit coaches. So I want to address all them uh, in part two here of our program design methods. And I'll give you a little insight to uh, we're on a new uh, mini cycle here. And this is a lower body day. Uh, and before I actually show you that workout, what I want you to understand is there's a difference between programming workouts for athletes. There's a difference between programming workouts um, for people that are just looking to get fit. They're chasing fitness. And there's a difference in programming for CrossFitters. CrossFitters who are competing for uh, open regionals games and CrossFitters who just love to be fit. This would fit anybody except for those that are really chasing um, to get into CrossFit Games. If you want to get into CrossFit Games, you need to seek somebody who's extremely dialed in and experienced with uh, the style of competing that happens during regionals, during open, during regionals, during games, understands all the different movements, understands uh, really preparing for the unknown. This here works great, like I said, in a strength and conditioning model, fitness model, and also for military law enforcement. So. Let's check it out. We're on a new mini cycle, and uh, the last cycle that we were on, we actually were doing zercher squats. This cycle, we're doing double kettlebell squats. Oftentimes, we couple it with jumps, and when we do a mini cycle, we will allow them to mix it up. One week, they could do jumps first, followed by the heavy movement. The next week, they could flip it, and that's a contrast method where you're doing something heavy for strength and uh, explosive for speed. And a lot of people will say, well, why do you switch it? Where's the continuity? When you're training athletes, uh, through our experience, through the years of experience, athletes are extremely eccentric, meaning they just mentally, they always want these changes. They really thrive in that kind of environment. They get bored extremely quick. So if you think that you're going to do a six-week training cycle of just back squats, they're going to go crazy. So doing the little things, such as changing the style of squats, two to three weeks of zerchers, two to three weeks of back squat, two to three weeks box squat, two to three weeks uh, uh, kettlebell squats, sandbag squats, and so on. So the squatting movement remains the same, but changing the style of squats is what we would switch up here. The contrast method works awesome, where they're coupling explosiveness with heavy lifting. This has been a great way to really improve their athleticism, to improve their explosiveness. Excellent and also develops what we chase, which is the special strengths. That's extremely important for these athletes, and we will tweak it according to what they need. So, our combative athletes who need a lot of repeat bursts of strength and power, they're going to be doing things like this. Whereas, uh, maybe some of our uh, swimmers at the end of the workout, we're going to do some sort of finishers that relate to the time that it would take for them to do a race. So if their typical um, race takes them a minute, two minutes, then we're going to be doing repeats of a minute to two minute of bursts to develop that speed endurance, power endurance, strength endurance. Um, the thing about the athletes is that I can't emphasize enough is that we're looking for steady progress and that we have to keep them excited about the workouts. Uh, and then on top of all that, the training cannot interfere with their skill, their ability to perform the sport. Training for sports today is way different than it was when probably you and I were kids. When I was younger, you couldn't you know, travel to any other town and get wrestling coaching. It just wasn't available. There was one wrestling club in New Jersey. The others may have been kind of hidden um, in somebody's uh, garage or basement and really doing uh, their own uh, small like special invite now there are wrestling clubs in every town If you want to play baseball there are uh, batting cages and and throwing coaches everywhere same thing goes for uh, tennis swimming you name it there are special clubs for these kids to continually train so if this training makes them too sore uh, fatigues their body their muscles in certain areas that interfere with their ability to hold technique so for wrestlers if we're crushing their lower back and they can't maintain wrestling stance or we fatigue their legs too much, it interferes with them. 
If we're training uh, football players and we're smashing their legs, doing distance running, no good. Um, one of the things that happened this week is uh, our wrestlers, um, their coach had them run five miles. Five miles, figure out maybe a seven mile pace is 35 minutes. There's no such wrestling match that's 35 minutes. There's no need at the end of a three month season to be running five miles. It's not going to do anything. In fact, at this time of year, those kids that qualified for regions need to be doing one thing, wrestling. They need to be working on their technique. So coaches need to start getting smarter um, or really just using common fucking sense. Just use common sense, plain and simple. Our program design model and method is about using common sense and making sure that our training strengthens the muscles and improves the performance of those athletes involved in whatever particular sport they're in. If the training takes away from their skill work, from their uh, mental uh, abilities, meaning their confidence, their mental toughness, if it takes away from any part of their performance, be it mental or physical, then the training needs to be adjusted and fixed immediately, period. So if you're looking at this workout, you see we do our contrast method with a strength lift followed by explosiveness. We do our unilateral work to make sure that we're getting good balance. We're doing sandbag step ups coupled with hitting a weak side, which is the back and the hamstrings, lower repetition so we don't really fatigue that back but just make it stronger, more explosive, double kettlebell cleans, and then doing short distance band resisted sprints. Now if any portion of this workout would be interfering with a performance, like we know what that athlete has to do, we might say, hey man, you're going to skip out on those kettlebell cleans and you're just going to do the step ups, couple it with abs. Hey dude, you do plenty of running, you're not going to do the band resisted sprints. Let's do some light sled drags coupled uh, with some abs, then finish with a lot of mobility and, and soft tissue work to get some lower body recovery. It's just about using common sense. The reason why I get fired up is because athletes have small windows of opportunity to succeed. Coaches that don't want to be open minded and don't want to learn more, they end up hurting those athletes. And athletes never have a second chance to go back and make this happen again. So look in here, that's day one. We'll be following this mini cycle for two weeks. Um, usually when we're doing a kettlebell movement, it's gonna be two weeks. If we're gonna be doing a barbell movement, it may have been more like three weeks. So we don't necessarily just do five, three, one, but it's like an introductory week, second week breaking records, third week once again trying to break records. And breaking records does not only come from adding more weight. Getting stronger and getting more explosive oftentimes comes from uh, demonstrating an ability to have better technique. Better technique demonstrates that you've got more skill and more control over a weight. Even if the reps are the same, it makes you stronger. And in every workout, there's some form of explosive and speed work. A lot of times, um, it's in the form of uh, jumps or throwing. Mm, the Olympic lifting, if we could see these kids here more often, and if I was a skilled Olympic lifting coach, it would be used more. At the college level, these coaches get to see athletes three, four, five days a week. At the high school level, when we don't have control really over what they do, we're seeing them twice a week. That's the norm, very rarely three days a week. So I hope that helps you guys a little bit more insight into the underground strength program design methods, utilizing mini cycles, utilizing auto regulation. So the intensity is determined on how they feel that day and any kind of upcoming competitive events coming up. And number three, let's just use common sense and none of the training should interfere with their performance. That is critical. If you got any more questions, go to undergroundstrength.org. That's the information on our SERP or go to undergroundstrength.tv and make sure you guys pick up your free gift. All right, guys, peace out. Take care. Comb your hair. Later.